final status check for all Atlas vehicle systems, ground systems, the payload, and the U.S. Space Force Eastern Range. Let's listen in as Dylan performs the final poll. L minus seven minutes. Status check to proceed with terminal count, Atlas systems, propulsion. Go. Hydraulics. Go. Pneumatics. Go. LO2. Go. Water. Go. Centaur systems, propulsion. Go. Pneumatics. Go. LO2. Go. LH2. Go. Pass gas. Go. Electrical systems, airborne. Go. Ground. Go. Facility. Go. RFFTS. Go. Flight control. Go. CCQ. Go. Op support. Go. Com. Go. Umbilical. Go. ECS. Go. Red line monitor. Go. Quality. Go. Op safety manager. Go. ULS safety officer. Go. Vehicle system engineer. Go. Anomaly chief. Go. Range and weather. Go. Launch director. You have permission to launch. Proceeding with the count. ALC verify T0 is set for 10, 54, 30, Zulu. Verified. Polling is complete, and the team is go for launch. From now until liftoff, launch conductor Dylan Rice and the launch team will continue reporting the final steps in today's countdown. This includes verifying propellant levels and pressures in the booster and Centaur fuel tanks, as well as arming the ordnance for ignition, separation, and flight termination. At T minus one minute, the range confirms it is in a green condition for launch, assuring there are no nearby constraints like boats, planes, or weather, and that all tracking systems are operational. At T minus 25 seconds, you'll hear Go Atlas, Go Centaur, Go Kuiper. This is the final status check for the rocket and payload. To dampen the acoustic shock at liftoff, at T minus six seconds, the launch pad's water deluge system activates, followed a few seconds later by booster engine ignition. Then, after seeing Atlas lift off, you'll hear flight commentator Daniel Brunson providing updates as the rocket ascends into space. While we arm the ordnance systems, we are preparing several key components for flight, such as the pyrotechnic initiated valves, energetic separation systems, and ordnance igniters, which ignite the solid rocket boosters. Ordnance is often associated with flight termination, but there are many additional uses for energetics within the vehicle. This is Atlas Mission Control at T minus four minutes and holding. We anticipate releasing the hold in just a few moments. On my mark, the time will be T minus four minutes and counting. Three, two, one, mark. The countdown clock has resumed and we are go for launch at 6.54.30 a.m. Eastern. After liftoff, ULA's Atlas V rocket will fly northeast from Space Launch Complex 41. Here's a look at today's flight. Following final confirmation of rocket readiness, the RD-180 engine and five Gem-63 solid rocket boosters ignite to produce more than two million pounds of thrust, lifting ULA's Atlas V rocket away from the pad. Shortly after liftoff, the rocket begins a pitch over to attain the proper flight path while minimizing the dynamic pressure it experiences during flight. Atlas then reaches Mach 1, the speed of sound. The addition of five solid rocket boosters, or SRBs, precisely augment the liftoff thrust of the Atlas V, giving it the power to deliver the payload to orbit. With their propellant expired approximately 96 seconds into ascent, the SRBs burn out, followed by jettison. Atlas's guidance system then begins steering towards the precise target in space. Amazon's Kuiper satellites are encapsulated inside a five meter diameter payload fairing which provides protection to the spacecraft during ascent. After crossing the Kármán line, entering space, the payload fairing is jettisoned. With the majority of propellant expended fighting against the force of gravity, 
the RD-180 engine shuts down and the booster stage separates. The rocket then begins second stage flight, weighing less than 7% of what it did at liftoff. ULA's high-performance Centaur, with its RL-10 engine, ignites, powering the upper stage and spacecraft into a circular low-Earth orbit. The first burn comes to an end with engine shutdown, followed by Centaur orienting into the proper position to release Amazon's Project Kuiper satellites to build their low-Earth orbit satellite broadband network. One forty. Launch enabled. One thirty seven. T minus ninety seconds. The launch vehicle, ground systems, payload, and eastern range are go for launch. For those of you just tuning in, I'm Ben Chilton, joining you for today's live coverage of ULA's Atlas V launch of Amazon's Project Kuiper satellites. At this time, the team is not working any issues, and we're proceeding towards liftoff at 6.54.30 a.m. Eastern. Bed valve's locked. One minute. Rock, report range status. Range green. Forty. Stable at step three. Twenty eight. Verify ECS reduced for launch. Verified. Twenty four. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go Kuiper. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition and liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying satellites for Amazon's Project Kuiper Internet Constellation, continuing a new chapter in low Earth orbit satellite connectivity. We've ended our pitch over maneuver. Body rate's turn zero. One point five miles in altitude, traveling twelve hundred miles per hour. Mach one, Alice is now supersonic. You are hearing Daniel Brunson providing launch vehicle assistance. Traveling full power. Two miles downrange, six miles in altitude. Hydraulics continue to look good. Body rate is expected. Alice continues right down the center of the range track, six miles downrange. Entering our next throttle bucket. Preparation for SRB burnout. At this point in flight, Atlas is now half of its original liftoff weight, and engines continue to look good. And max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. And good indication of SRB burnout. Engine response continues to look good. Preparing for SRB jettison. Vehicle throttling back up to full power. And we got good indication of separation of all five SOBs. Hydraulics continue to look good. Body rates looking as expected. Vehicles now approaching 40 miles downrange, 37 miles in altitude. We just heard confirmation of solid rocket booster jettison. These additional motors augmented the thrust at liftoff, giving the Atlas rocket an extra boost to reach its circular low Earth orbit destination. We're coming up on our next mission event, Jettison of the Payload Fairing. Let's listen in. And two minutes to expect a VECO. Engine continues to look healthy.
Vehicle is now 72 miles downrange, traveling at 5,500 miles per hour. Entering our next throttle segment, maintaining a constant 2.5 Gs in preparation for PLF jettison. And we've got activation of the RCS system on the upper stage. Vehicles past the Carmen line, we've exited the Earth's atmosphere. Approaching 7,000 miles an hour, 120 miles downrange. And we've got payload fairing jettison, and good indication of CFLR deck jettison. Engine continues to burn nominally. Sixty seconds to nominal beco. Hydraulics to look good. Flight commentator Daniel Brunson just called out confirmation of payload fairing jettison. The composite fairing protects the spacecraft as it pushes through the harshest parts of Earth's atmosphere. Next, we'll hear callouts for cutoff of the Atlas first stage engine and separation of the booster stage, followed by ignition of ULA's Centaur second stage engine. These events occur when the first stage has escaped Earth's atmosphere, getting above the Kármán line and into space. The Centaur upper stage, with the Kuiper satellites attached, then takes over on a trajectory to a precise location in space. Let's listen in as we approach these milestones. And completion of boost phase chill down. Engine housing temps responding as expected. And BCO booster engine cutoff. Good indication of centaur separation. Got pre start on H2 and O2. And ignition of centaur upstage. This will be a 13 minute, 36 second first burn. We've enabled steering on the upper stage. Sent our PU set to open loop. This is Atlas Mission Control at T plus five minutes. We just heard flight commentator Daniel Brunson confirm the successful completion of the early milestones in today's flight, and all systems continue to operate nominally. The launch team is happy to have another beautiful sunrise launch of the Atlas V here on Florida's Space Coast. As we wrap up today's live coverage, I'd like to say thank you for tuning in to today's flight. I'd also like to remind everyone that for more information about ULA and the Atlas rocket, please visit ULALaunch.com and subscribe to our UA, ULA Launch YouTube channel. And plan to join us for our next launch when ULA's new Vulcan rocket will launch its first mission for the U.S. Space Force. Before we sign off, let's take another look at today's liftoff. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition and liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying satellites for Amazon's Project Kuiper Internet Constellation continuing a new chapter in low Earth orbit satellite connectivity. We've ended our pitch over maneuver. Body rate's turning zero. One point five miles in altitude, traveling twelve hundred miles per hour. <laughs>